Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. And this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Welcome or welcome back. We're here with another Steve Will Try It Retro Edition. Get the retro. So, why retro? Well, we're going to be looking at two products that take us back, take me back to my childhood. So, you guys know I love commercial products. And the two we're going to look at tonight are made for TV. But they're around the beginning of the whole as seen on TV, um, infomercial marketing, that whole ploy of the 80s that just kind of poured out everywhere. Uh, the first one we're gonna take a look at is the clapper. So the clapper is like the great, great, great grandmother of Alexa. It was one of the first home automation devices that were available on the market. Everybody knew the commercial. Everyone's seen the commercial. The woman at the end rolls over, claps, and the lights go out. They were trying to, I think, market it mostly to seniors um, who wouldn't be able to get up or wouldn't want to get up and go turn off a light, turn off a lamp, um, some other appliance, things like that. The only challenge with the clapper nowadays is that it has a lot to compete with. And you can only plug so many devices into it in order to have the clap on, clap off effect. It also has what they call home away switch for security. So that switch is supposed to make whatever light come on motion sensor. So at any time if there's anything in. So that's supposed to distract or deter um, home invaders, anybody else that would be would be coming in. Um, there's only a couple hangups with this being older is that there's probably some new appliances that aren't gonna work just because of wiring, there's digital stuff, there's other stuff going on. But we're gonna we're gonna open it up, we're gonna try it out, we're gonna see if we can get a lamp to go from clapping, and then We'll decide from there if we, we like it or not, if we really want to keep it. I mean, there was an upgrade in 92 to it, which was a smarter upgrade. And then they have other specialized ones, different movies, different this. Like, they have, you know, sp special ones for every movie. They have one. Kind of like with Chia Pets, they had one. We have Sophia from the Golden Girl somewhere, but the Chia Pet was originally a pet. And then they had heads. There was Obama. You know, there were all sorts of different ones. So, we'll take a look at this. What we'll look at first, though, is another throwback product. Now, I don't know, everyone I know, if you've ever been married, if you ever got a new place, somebody bought you knives. And if it was the 1970s or 80s, they might have been Ginsu knives. Ginsu knives. So, this is a throwback. Does anybody remember the program? Um, how is it? In Japan, hand can cut anything, like knife. Um, but doesn't work on tomato. So that was the lead into it. They had, you know, Japanese man karate chop because it's a Japanese product or Japanese steel is what the, the sale of it is trying to be. It's always had a reputation as being long lasting that you would get like a lifetime guarantee on it. But um, we'll see. Now it comes in dishwasher safe for all of them. Two of them are ridged. Three were ridged. The only one that isn't is the, um, the chef's knife that's in the middle. The rest have their signature serration, which is supposed to be able to have you cut easily through a tomato, tin can, all the stuff, frozen things, marble blocks, headstones. It's allegedly puts all that stuff, you know, to the test and the product wins. So this was brought in, if you've ever heard of Ed uh, Valenti. Ed Valenti is like godfather of the infomercial. He, was a, he predates Ron Popeil with his pocket fisherman. He comes before that. He's also the person who trademarked, um, but wait, there's more. See, at first it was just there's more, but then, but wait, there's more. That's his baby. That, that came out of his mouth. And it kind of set the standard for selling things over media in a person's home and selling products that are supposed to make your life easier. These are meant for a home cook. That's who they're supposed to be for. It gives the feel that you're using a chef's knife and a busy executive chefs are using these things and and you can have part of that too just buy these and bring them home so we're gonna put these through the ringer and see what we think of them I think we're probably gonna go with these into the kitchen first we're gonna try out a few things cutting it see what works what we like what we don't um, there's a few different tests I want to give it I am no infomercial host I couldn't sell knives probably but we're gonna see if these knives sell themselves I'm going to try it out on the things they did in the commercial, see if it does what it's supposed to do, what it's alleged to do, or shown to do, and um, then we'll review and see if it gets between one and five thumbs with our Toxic Avenger hand. Five thumbs up. So, 
How about that? Why don't we take ourselves into the kitchen and we're gonna break out the knives and we'll start seeing if we can cut some stuff up. Alrighty? <laughs> Introducing a revolutionary way to cut, chop, dice, and slice, the Ginsu. In Japan, the hand can be used as a knife. Okay, not so much here in the States. But that method doesn't work with a tomato. Enter the Ginsu knife and the incredible Daku set, the only knife set you will ever need. It's true. It chops, it dices, it cuts through practically anything, even a tin can. But it works. And it never needs sharpening. Amazing! The Daku set includes an 8 inch chef knife, 8 inch bread knife, 7 inch santoku knife, 4.5 inch utility knife, and a 3.5 inch paring knife. And comes with an incredible 50 year warranty! And that's amazing! still works. Oh, yeah. It's the finest knife in the world. You mean finer than our famous English knives? Finer than our German knives? Yep. It's the finest knife in the world. Simple as that. Bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line. What would you pay for a knife like that? It chops through wood with ease. Ooh, crafting, 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 crafting. Well, maybe not so much. I can get that. The Ginsu knife will make you feel like a samurai warrior in the kitchen. What are you waiting for? Get yours today. <laughs> Here we are. Ginsu knives. This is making me think Golden Girl. I'm remembering the story that Rose told about the Herring War and the Herring Circus and the cutting themselves with tiny little Ginsu knives. Anyway, that just happened, happened to go through my head. So looking at the product that we got, we have five different knives. One's got a flat edge on it, and the other have kind of their signature um, serrated, buried between the, the height of this. The idea is that the blade between here is extremely sharp, and it won't hit the food, it'll hit the little Spines on top. So I'm no professional product tester, but we're gonna try out a few things that you usually see in the commercial. The one that like all these guys that sell knives test themselves on is cutting paper. So like this, so we'll see. Okay. Let me try again. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try bread. So here we have some nice bread. This is a dense, chewy bread. We've tried out the chef's knife. Let's go for braided chef's knife and see how we do. All right. It's bread. It's bread. Let's see how thin I can cut it. It's a skinny piece of bread, isn't it? Okay. All right. Let me try the flat blade one just to see. That works as well, if not better. Okay. So this is the preferred one for me so far. We'll put that over there. And we've done our bread. Let's try frozen food. And we got the signature frozen spinach that they chop in half. I should be able to go straight through this like that. All right. You ready? Are we all ready? Okay. Well, I 
I'm not optimistic about this finish. It got about halfway through. So, I thought using the knife with the biggest teeth would probably get us through it. But it's too... Frozen food is too frozen for the Ginsu knives. Better off to microwave it. Okay. So, that leaves us with the tomato and the can. They used to use proper cans for this, where it was actually a big show. Um, we're going to try... Eh, we'll do... First, the little can. Now, it's a little Pepsi can, and they used to be, again, more sturdy. These are aluminum. I'm going to use one of the smaller knives. Using the two smallest that came with it. Kind of like on the paring knife end of things. But I want to see if the blade's the blade, I should be able to go through it. Not on the first try. On the second. Okay. So it was a matter of which knife, I guess. The bigger knife worked better. So it did cut the can. And the tomato. The tomato is the signature of selling knives. They'll throw it up. They'll cut the knife through it. We're just going to see if we can get through it first. Okay. You know what? Let's try them all back to back here on the tomato. This is our no teeth on it. Extremely sharp as that cuts. And it couldn't get through the spinach. Did okay. Here's the one that got halfway through the can. Okay. And this is the last little paring knife. Okay. And then we'll do what they do in the commercial. You fillet the fillet. So you cut it off. There's your piece of it. And then you press it down for And it comes off. And there's tomato skin. And then they go back and cut this as thin as they can get it. Then they pick up a grapefruit. So... It is working with these little things, actually. That's as thin tomato skin as I've seen. This knife I like. Right, so there's that one, that one. That's all of them. We're having tomato sandwiches with a side of spinach. You can probably tell. All right, some of these I loved, some of them I didn't. So it's not an all or nothing thing with this. So I'm going to have to peruse over it, noodle over it, and see which ones I like, which ones I don't. So while I was thinking about it, let's take another look at another vintage product. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap And now, enjoy these classic commercials through the years from The Clapper. Clap on, clap on, clap on, The Clapper. Let you turn things on or off from anywhere in the room. Just plug in The Clapper and the television, lamp, stereo, almost anything you want to clap on and off. Clap on. Clapper is now available at all Hills department stores, Phase Drugs, and... and one with three. Now, Bob Ross talking clapper with nightlight. Clap two times to turn your lamp on and off. Clap three times to turn on the nightlight and hear Bob Ross say in his own voice, Cleaning does nothing else. It should make you happy. Clap the nightlight off and hear, You have to have dark in order to show light. Get these clappers at clapon.com and Amazon. Clap on, clap off, the clapper. Um, first thing worth, two things worth mentioning right off the bat. I had to look around the house to find a lamp that I was simple enough in putting together that I could just plug it in. So we're here in the living room. You guys might remember this place. We built a piano out here. Um, <laughs> as you can see. And it's wearing a pashmina. So this box, this is the product. That much shipping for this. Okay. It's pretty simple, okay? So there's the two outlets that are on here, all right? 
and then the dial is on the side for night, low, and away. So we'll go with high, not night, excuse me, high, low, and away. So we're gonna plug this in. I have an outlet right here. <clears throat> Extra prongs, so you never know. So there's that. Now here's the plug for the lamp. Okay, and I clap. Who is this man from Nazareth? It worked. Okay, let's. It turned on. How about that? Okay, one extra clap didn't kill me. That part's okay. That's fine. I'm going to try a way. A way is supposed to be sensitive enough that if anything moves near it, it's going to trigger it to go off. So I'm going to try to hold still. Didn't work. <laughs> I'll be doing this all night. Okay. So let's put it over onto a way. Instant movement. Instant movement. So, okay, so a way is whatever. If nobody was home and a little pit mouse ran by, suppose it would go on. But otherwise, I've only had to clap like two extra times. It's not bad, I have to say. So, this thing's been around 40 years. Is it worth it still being around? We shall see. I'll meet you back on the couch for our final thoughts. Hey guys, hey, you know how much I love to invade, Steve will try it, and I just happen to have a little D-Y-K for you involving, oh yeah, the clapper. <laughs> so here's a little known fact, the clapper wasn't the first device of its type. No, it wasn't. In fact, many years before the clapper debuted in the 1980s, there was another product that did the exact same thing called the Great American Turn-On. Now, this product was admittedly flawed. It only worked intermittently, and it had its share of lawsuits due to, well, due to safety uh, issues and violations. Now, that product, it was manufactured by a company called Futronics Electrical Systems, and they ultimately went bankrupt in 1980, selling off all of its assets, including the Great American Turn-On. And another company by the name of Joseph Enterprises snatched it right up and produced, well, the clapper that we've known all through through the years. Now the clapper itself, you know, it wasn't exempt from its own share of legal troubles, the most famous one being an elderly lady in the 1990s broke her fist because she clapped too hard to get her clapper to operate. It went to court and she sued Joseph Enterprises, but it ultimately was dismissed in appeals court. And how about that jingle? Clap on, clap off, the clapper. clapper. <laughs> I have a feeling you may be singing that for, well, a couple days now. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the couch. Um, so, reflections. And I have my little kitty boys to give their peanut gallery opinion too. So, we'll start with the Ginsu knives. Five knives, four serrated, one with, with the straight edge on this. Straight edges will get dull over time. I'm not sure how much they guarantee this for. A lot of the knives are lifetime guarantee, and if it's not, it's in very small print on the back. So for all the stuff we tried to cut, we got through a tomato, we got through the bread. We got through half the can with one knife and then the other half with the other. I couldn't get through the spinach and the paper was okay. So the only knife I really liked out of all of them, I kind of don't like their signature serrated bit, but this knife was sharp and everything that was edible, it cut. So it cut tomatoes, it cut bread, it cut. Um, on the strength of this being around for so many years, I'll give it one star there. The fact that I was trying to do those things as seen on the TV and could only do like half of them, um, I don't know, I think we have knives now that I could have done better than this. And a Ginsu knife, it's supposed to be the premiere at the very, very tippy top. However, given its failure in some tests, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Thumbs up. Three, you know, give it some, because it's older, so I'm, you know. But then also, the one that works, works. The other ones are fine. You can cut a tomato with any new knife. You can get a knife from Dollar Tree when it's new. And the first time, it'll cut like a dream. It's how it is in a year, how it is in a few years. So, three out of five thumbs up. As to the clapper. Clap on, clap off. 
Okay, again, because it's old school and it has staying power, there's at least one thumb up there. Um, this, to me, it's, it's back and forth. The product does what it says it's supposed to do. That should be it, right? But the problem is there's a lot of other devices now that will do what this does and other stuff. You know, people screaming out, Alexa, turn off the lights, put on no rain from Blind Melon, you know, whatever you're screaming out. And this only does a couple of things. The away feature is kind of cool, but it, it's probably a bit obsolete at this time. Um, it was marketed for older folks. This is much closer to something I get my parents than an Alexa, just to say. It's a different kind of generation. Um, so it does what it's supposed to, but it could be replaced. So four out of five. Four thumbs up out of five is what we're going to give. The clapper. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you for being here. Stay tuned for next week. We have something a little bubbly coming up. So, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell. You'll get alerts when we have new videos and when we go live. Uh, Facebook, X, Instagram, all our contact info's below. You should see a link at some point for the playlist for all the Steeple Trides if you're interested in watching. Thank you, and we'll catch up with you very soon. All right. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Mark. He's out soon. Bye, guys. Come on. Thank you all for watching! <laughs>